Eden Utilities can help your organization to convert the energy it uses every day into a more sustainable source of supply. We are a professional, totally independent, but friendly utility consultancy that can offer any organization a way of converting its own waste into energy. This provides a number of beneficial rewards. So, if you already recycle items like plastics and paper, you could now use the rest of the waste your business creates to generate power for use back into your organization. If you don't do any recycling yet, you could start now without the need for any additional effort or large initiative. Our Eden Infinity product provides your business with a way of not only helping the planet, but also saving you money. Your business creates waste. That waste is collected, and then we work with your energy supplier to ensure that the power generated from your waste is used to supply electricity back to you. In doing something like this, along with doing your bit to help save the planet and meeting your business's green targets, it provides great PR for your organization, sending a very positive message to your suppliers, clients, and stakeholders. It's something to be very proud of. At Eden Utilities, we pride ourselves on being unique with our continuous innovation, along with our ethos of providing a fully transparent pricing model to all our clients. Our personable approach means we always work with you to find the best for you. We regard ourselves as an extension of your business, a partner. Eden Utilities, your sustainability partner. You've joined us again. It must be fate. It's an early kickoff. It isn't late. This show's going to be great. It's Talk of the Town, episode eight. Hello, good evening and welcome to a very wet The People's Pension Stadium here where the Reds will be taking on Tranmere in just an hour's time in what is guaranteed to be a great League 2 battle here in the rain. 
Coming up on the show over the next hour, we'll be bringing you all the build-up to the game. Erdem Konya and John Yems, as always, will be swinging by. We'll have Talk Sports, Harry Maynard. Gary will be back once again to try and defend his crown as champion of higher or lower. And we will also have a very special interview with Crawley Town legend, Ian Payne. At the end of the show, we'll also be giving you a very special Kiosk Ken's deal of the week. So that is not to be missed. On today's show, hopefully you'll see some changes at the bottom of the screen. Maybe here, I, I, I don't know, maybe here somewhere. Um, you should see some comments, so please engage with the show. Co put some messages on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, however you're watching the show. Please get in touch with us. We'll be reading them out and trying to engage with you throughout the show. Of course, once again, as always, we are offering you the match day deal for ballers, burgers, chips and a can of drink for just £5 on collection only. If you can get yourself down here this afternoon, grab that self, that bargain, really great value for money. Loads of you have been taking that up, so a huge thank you to you. If you can't get down, of course you can uh, order on Just Eat or Uber Eats and get it delivered to your door as you take in the game. Of course, you can take in the game as well. Uh, just £10 on iFollow on the website. Please go there, £10. Season ticket holders should have had a code from Katie in the ticket office. If you're a non-season ticket holder, you don't have to miss out. Just £10 and you can watch the game. Much cheaper than the Premier League value. There you go. Oh, well, I think that was the longest intro we've ever had. So without further ado, let's take a look back at Saturday's draw in Manchester away at Salford. Only one defeat in the last nine league games and two in 11 for today's hosts. They're doing okay. Going into today's match in seventh place. Want themselves a free kick here. Take it nice and quickly, maybe too quickly in actual fact for the officials. Wants to bring it back, it's gonna be a yellow card. Jack Powell it is who's going into the book. Didn't seem to be much in it, did there, to be fair. The ball was there to be won. What can they do from this free kick, though? It's a decent ball. Real danger there for the visitors. Not properly cleared either as well. And the chance possibly of a counter-attack. Got a bit of space down this left-hand side. It's going to be another card. So, free kick, Powell takes, it's a deep one, it's a good one, and that's really the best chance of the game for Crawley so far. First time they've tested the goalkeeper. It's a decent one, isn't it? And it's the real first time that they've put that keeper under any sort of pressure. So, nil-nil it was at half-time then. Crawley unbeaten in actual fact, not conceded in both their league meetings against Salford. Only league meeting here earlier this year in February ended goalless. Let's see if we can get a goal in this match, though. Matthews, good play. Here's low down the right-hand side. This is danger. It's a good block in the end. It needed to be as well. Matthews, he's had a, he had a good first half. He was as dangerous as anyone, to be honest with you. When the ball went in towards Frankham. Well, maybe Nichols will feel he should have got a shot on target. Only three wins in the last 16 at home. But only one defeat in the last nine. So, Salford, although they're seventh in the league, possibly a little bit unlucky that Graham Alexander lost his job earlier in the season. But this is a shooting opportunity. Oh, what a goal that is! Really, really good goal from James Wilson. Well, they didn't seem to be much on, did they, when it came to him? He had defenders all round him. Nice little turn onto his left foot. That's a brilliant goal. What a way to score your fourth goal of the season, third in the league. It's now four in four for Wilson. Crawley did well in the first half against Exeter midweek. They were 1-0 up. They found themselves 2-1 down at the end, though. Opportunity here, perhaps. That wasn't the best bit of defending. This is Matthews. Matthews shoots. Good save. There's the follow-up from Frankham. And it's 1-1. Good goal from the defender. Well, you have to say, that possibly was coming as well. 
Not a very good bit of defending from Turnbull. His manager would have expected him to get that away. And it fell to Matthews. He only really had one thing in mind. Good save from the keeper. Only half away. And that's Frankham's third league goal of the season. And his second in his last three matches. Game on, 1-1. One, one. So it's possibly Powell's right foot or Matthews' left foot. He's going to be Powell. It's a good free kick. It's a good save in the end. He puts his hands on his head, Powell. I think he thought that might have squirmed under the keeper. Let's see it again. It looked like it might have been Matthews' left. Powell takes it. And in these conditions, anything on target is dangerous. Yet yeah, keeper does well. Powell's free kick. This is danger for the host. Good shooting opportunity. Hessen Tyler! Oh, that should have been on target. Jake Hessen Tyler inches wide. Let's see it again. He pulls off, doesn't he? Edge of the penalty area. He had time. Should be getting that on target. Make the keeper work. performance up in Manchester at the weekend. Uh, I'm delighted to say I'm joined by Rob from the Tranmere media team on the radio this afternoon for the opposition. Before we come to Rob, let's just go through the Reds lineup this evening. Uh, Glenn, it's the same unchanged starting eleven from Saturday, so Glenn Morris starts in goal, uh, goal scoring master George Frankham starts again at right back with uh, Tunnicliffe, Craig and Doherty making up the back four. Jake Heskiff comes in and starts again, Jack Powell, Hessenthaler and Matthews with Tom Nichols and Max Watters. So I see there Spider 2715, keen on Max Watters being in the side. He is, luckily for you. On the bench, uh, Tom McGill, Joe McNerney, uh, Taryn Alarakia, Tyler Frost, Sam Ashford, Archie Davis and Brian Gallack makes up the, ba the bench. Um, Rob, thank you very much for joining us. Safe trip down from, from up north. It was surprisingly wet down south yeah. today. Normally it's grim up north, but it's been pretty grim on the way down today. <laughs> well, well, yeah. What can I say? But it seems the rain seems to have cleared, so the pitch will be a bit damp. But hopefully it will be. This is not... for the sprinklers. That's yeah, yeah, good. that's it. The ground will save a bit of water. Um, Firstly, Rob, let's, I just want to go back to last season. I know you may not want to talk about it. Um, I, know, I know many at, at Tranmere felt very treated unjustly. Um, going down on points per game. H how has the mood been sort of over that period of time and, and what's, the, what's the mood in the camp like in Tranmere? Um, it's strange uh, insofar as the, the scar from the demotion, not relegation, demotion. Yeah. <laughs> that lasted a long time. Uh, for the players that were there last season and experienced it, it still has been uh, a kick in the teeth. We also had a, a little bit of a scenario. You did play at Salford. We had a similar scenario at Salford where we were badly affected by COVID isolations, but we weren't allowed to postpone the game. Uh, we saw a huge performance from the team then, but... You got a draw, I think. We did, we're 2-0 yeah. down, yeah. Couple of, five minutes to go, came back and could have won it. Um, yeah, Solvent aren't the greatest at home, they do tend to yeah. bottle it a little bit, don't they? <laughs> uh, no, um, it's still not totally enamoured with the, uh, the EFL at the moment. So no. there's still a, a, a scar. And rather than uh, healing, there seems to be salt poured on it this season. So, yeah, no, there's still a sense of an injustice. Yeah, of course. And I, I, I suppose looking at the positive side of things, trying to put a positive spin on it, m many people expected you to stay up last year, that they believe if the season had finished that you would have stayed up. You were on a really good run going into when the, when the season was curtailed. Do you think you're going to be able to bring that into this season? And actually, you're a League One side in League Two, or do you feel like actually you are a League, one, League Two side now? Fundamentally, if you look at the off the field, we're a League One side. Um, some of the players are certainly play, capable and have played at a higher level. This season, there's just nothing about the season, the way it's unwound. In theory, you look at us and say, disappointing. But actually, if you know what's going on, we've never had a full 20, 22 at training as of yet. Mm. So when training's taken place, the, the training matches, it's... Uh, Often a few of the, the reserves or the academy have been making up the numbers. And when you're training and you've got your centre-half, your centre-half's going to look fabulous because he's winning every header, but he's jumping against the young lad. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and also the same is true of the forwards. That's not to say they're not playing badly, but they're just not getting the same intensity of competition in the, uh, the training. As of yet, we've also struggled to put a continuous team out. And because of that, we haven't established the right combinations going to see a different side tonight again um could be interesting but as it stands i think the fans are still expecting 
yeah. a promotion challenging season. But I think circumstances off the pitch and with regard to everything else could impact more than the ability of the squad. I, I suppose looking at historically in League Two, you don't have. It seems to me you don't have to be good all season, like to, to to do well in League Two. You, you you do get people who obviously are and they're consistent and they they will go up. But actually, teams that can just put a run together, they can actually be pretty poor even up till Christmas and be sort of down the, the lower end of the table. But if you can put a run together, you can sneak into those playoff positions. So I suppose, from Tranmere's point of view, it's about steadying the ship, putting putting last year to bed, and then trying to put on one of those runs to sort of challenge at the top end. Yep, as you say, the key to this division is. Just grinding out results. If you've got a semi who can score goals, and potentially we've got that with James Vaughan, yeah, and a defence that can keep clean sheets, and our keepers kept the, the keeper that will be playing tonight has kept four clean sheets in his last five games. The the combinations that are going to potentially preserve a point and gain you the three points at the moment. It's the midfield that just looking for the balance, just looking for the combinations that click because we've had. For an awful lot of the last few games, when we haven't been getting the results, we've had a winger playing as a centre forward on his own, without wingers even to provide the ammunition. So it hasn't looked too clever, but we've suffered really from uh, a reduced, yeah. depleted squad. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, C- Crawley were away um, both last Tuesday away and it's uh, and then away in Manchester and Salford on Saturday. So we're we're grateful to be back at home tonight. You've obviously you and the team have travelled a long way. Lastly, what what's your predictions uh, for this evening's game? You can say a tram meal win. We, we no, won't no, beat no, you no, up on the way you out. Know what? <laughs> I, that's it, because you're con- the two teams' confidences are high after last Saturday. So on the face of it, you think probably both sides would like to win and both sides are going to be happy if they get a draw out of it. I think realistically, we're looking for a performance more than a result. It's just, once again, because there have been a couple of changes, we're looking for the teams to gel. I'd be quite happy to come away with a draw because I think that was a great result for you at Salford on Saturday. And there... Uh, in theory, the form side, I think I'd sooner play them at their place than at home. But no, I think both sides could easily win. I'm going to go for a draw. Oh, he's sitting on the fence. Rob, thank you very much for Pleasure. joining us. Really appreciate your time. I mentioned at the top of the show about how you can get involved by supporting the club at Ballers. So let's take a look at some of the stuff that they're rustling up. Say now I'm joined by the gaffer, John Yems. John, thank you very much once again for joining us. I know it's the highlight of your week. It certainly Come. is. <laughs> Everyone's week. <laughs> of course, of course. Um, as always, we're just looking ahead to last Saturday. Really, really good performance away away from home. Almost sort of at the end of the game, I think you alluded to it in your post match stuff about how actually we were the side going on looking for the win. Really, all the hype beforehand. They're good football people up there and. When they're talking about our players and how well that we've done, sometimes you overlook what we have actually got, potentially. It's all potential at the moment. We ain't done anything at the minute. You know, you've gone to Salford and you drew, which you take, but hey-ho, we get on and make sure we do well tonight. It's the next game all the time. I see it. Like, what, what you're saying there about potential, like, I'm, I'm looking at the lineup this morning, this after, uh, this evening, when we got it, and th- there's six, six players in that lineup in the, in the 11, who weren't here last season. So effectively, more than half the side have had to come in, and that, that's going to take quite a long time, you'd have thought, to, for them to get together. Well, this time last year, me and Lee weren't here. <laughs> so everybody's meeting and everybody's gelling, and when you think we only came in in October, no, we didn't, we came in in December, Yeah. take the COVID out, I think we've been in the job about eight months, seven months, something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Seems a lot longer, but, you know. But in terms of actually period of time, football's 
football's being played. And, you know, having the boys 11 v 11, but it's a compliment to the lads. They're working hard and all the things going off the pitch, as I say, it's strange not seeing the fans here and enjoy it all. And, and like, so it's the same, it's the same line-up at 11 that started on, on Saturday. I think from, from the Tuesday night before, I think it was just Jake Heskip. So it's quite a settled side. Is that something that you're really keen to impose, a, a settled side at the club? Or? Obviously, you know, if you're looking for teams to gel, we're not good enough and we ain't got the players and rotation. And I don't, I'm not a believer in that anyway. If, you, if you're good enough, you always try and play your best 11 every week. Um, and then if you're looking for players to come in and replace the players you've got, they've got to be better than the ones you've got. So all the time you're looking to improve. Um, I think if you just do it to please people or to, you know, because someone's <laughs> your favourite, um, then, well, then you get yourself into trouble then because you've got to tell someone else. So every every one of that team's earned their place in that team. Yeah, and I, and I suppose that obviously Tyler Frost comes back on, onto the bench today. Tarrin, when he's played this season, he's been good. Sam Ashford did well off the bench. Archie Davis come on and, and did very well Saturday. So you, even looking at that bench, there's all players who have performed well this season and, and certainly will want that jersey, I suppose. Yeah, but it's only eight games, you know. Let's not get carried away with it. It's eight games. And we're every point we get, it takes you further from relegation. So let's sort of, like, you know, I'm not getting carried away with anything because, as I say to you, we've got so much, well, there's a lot of potential there, but potential don't win your games. You've got to get out and win them, starting with tonight. Yeah, absolutely. And, and obviously last week we were on the road, two, two long away trips. This week we've got the, the, the positive of being at home both Tuesday and Saturday. Does that mean you can get on the training field a little bit more this week? No. Or? All it means is, is you ain't got to sleep on the coach. But sometimes it, it, it helps you. But listen, there's no fans here. It don't matter where you are. I've said it before. It, you could be any ground in the country now because there's no one here supporting you. Yeah. So it's just another pitch with a different stadium around it, but you ain't got to drive to get there. It's <laughs> yeah, simple. Yeah. So yeah. you've got to make your own atmosphere and you've got to make your own spirit and you've got to lock the dressing room and make sure that what we do before we go out carries you through it. And, and, and lastly, we just had Rob on. I know you caught the end of, of Rob from Tranmere's interview. We were saying about the danger of James Vaughan from Tranmere. What are we expecting from them tonight? I should imagine you're expecting a side that's got relegated, that are going to be, to be very, very tough. They're an experienced side. Um, but I'll be more concerned of what they're expecting from us, to be honest. If you worry too much, if you, you know, and that's had the strength of the league. Don't forget these was a good side. You yeah. know, and they've been a good side over the years. They've got good players, they've got everything else. But you know what, if you start worrying about that, you might as well just stay in bed. Yeah, so, so, the, so the game plan is very much like, like, most like we're going to try and score more goals than him. Like you do most days, yeah. though, you know what I mean? <laughs> oh, God. Right, on that note, uh, cheers, John. Thank you very much yes. for joining us. We're going to bring in uh, Erdem Konya. Um, yeah, good. We, we haven't got an advert to, to slip to. This is going to be a, an unseamless swap, I'm afraid. Whilst we're doing that, just to let you know, we have got the... We are supporting the British Legion Poppy Appeal uh, this year one, once again. Um, we are selling it. <laughs> That's my deal of the week. Um, we are popping the British Legion uh, poppy appeal this year. We have got them in the shop with the Crawley Town crest on. So please do pop down and get them from the club shop. If you can't get down to the shop, you can uh, get them online at the British Legion website. There you go. Very, very. That was quite smooth actually. Quite happy with that little little change. Um, Erdem, thank you very much. Just getting mic'd up there. Yeah. Hopefully. That's right. <laughs> um, so just, sort of just carrying on, I know you just caught what, what, what John was saying there. Six, six new players in the eleven, uh, a couple more on the bench. Um, how have you, how, is, what's you, how are you assessing the new players that have come into the squad and how they how they've settled in? I think I'm assessing the group. Uh, you know, we had that conversation last week when we talked uh, about the trips that were Morecambe, uh, I mean the home game Morecambe and then Salford and Exeter and Salford. And I said the performance is what will be important. And then three games, I think we've, we've shown the same application in each game. We've played a certain way. I think we're gaining an identity. It's important that we don't get carried away. And we still, if we can play with the same endeavour, same effort, then it's about the group. You know, I've been here for five years and I've heard the same rhetoric sometimes from a lot of people on and off the pitch. Oh, without me, you'd be, this club's not going to go there. Without me, it's going to be in the conference, blah, blah, blah. Well, it's not about individuals, it's about the group. Mm -hmm. And the group is working as one now. So, and this is the best United group I've seen. So hopefully with a little bit of luck, we keep working hard. We can't drop off in any way, shape or form. And, you know, hopefully we can have a positive finish and progress on from last season. Yeah, that, that sort of camaraderie off the field yeah. carries on to the field as well because they all fight, fight for each other. And, and I think we saw that at Salford at, at the weekend where one nil down, it easily could have head dropped away from home. There's a big thing about the away form. And yeah. actually we didn't. And, and we come on strong after that. And... 
and it looked we good. should have got something in Exeter as well that's the truth yeah, yeah. Um, we didn't um, but the dressing room was like a morgue after the game you know I, I saw how disappointed the lads were and when you look back at it and you think Exeter away could have been three points for us that means that we're doing something right because you're playing playoff finalists and that's the way you're thinking and then they're no mugs they've got top players both Randells on both wings they're very good players so the fact that we've matched them applied and made so many chances if we can keep doing that, we've got a great identity. And it's not about individuals, it's about the team. And everyone is working hard for the team. And if you're not going to work hard for the team, then you can go. It's yeah, that yeah. simple. And, and I suppose you can, in a way you can see that with the with the goal scorers this year. You've got George Frankham's chipped yeah. in with a few. Uh, Max Watters has picked, uh, got a few. Tom, um, Tom Nichols has chipped in with two, a few. Two, yeah, yeah. Um, so, so it's like there, there isn't one superstar in this side so no. far this season. It's actually just a team of good quality players. I don't want to jump the gun, but this is the most united team uh, and group of people, including yourselves, on and off the pitch, I've seen this club united. So it's a big year for us. Uh, it's definitely, personally, it's a massive year for me because you know you've been doing something for so long. You want to see at least a the little fruits bit. of the yeah, labour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, of course, I'll take this now, and I'll be unpopular saying this. If someone offered me a million pound for a player today, and they say you finish 14th, regrettably, I'll probably take it because I know they'll cover the next two years of this football club. But I want, I want this group to carry on progressing. I think we've had a lot of ruptures with Harry's departure was a massive rupture. And I think we've just recovered from that now, to yeah. be honest with you. But right. I'm not just blowing his trumpet, but I think Yemsi is the best thing to happen to this football club in the past five years. I think he understands the identity, understands the bad, he's seen the levels, very good at identifying players, the proofs and the pudding. So that's been a great education and great learning for me as well, because we've been able to learn together and grow together. So that's, that's fantastic. And hopefully we can carry on. And looking at, the, obviously the FA Cup draw was last night, we, we drew away to Torquay, quite, quite tough, look, but my first instinct was, oh look, I think they're in the, in the Conference South, or actually no, flying high in the Conference. It's better than Wigan Sorry. away when Wigan were top of League <laughs> One, true. and you know, we played Bristol Rovers, we played these guys, we would keep playing these hard, we had Fleetwood, so um, it is a potential banana skin, don't get me wrong, however, it's nice to think, okay, we've got where we go in as the big boys, if you, as the favourites to a game, yeah, rather yeah. than going up to Wigan away and being like, Play minute. Uh, like, fingers you, crossed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it, at least we've got a chance. Uh, you know, we've just got to go there, work hard. The prize money will be important for us as well. I, I was going to say that yeah. obviously this year with, with no crowds. The, the the Carabao Cup this year, there's no prize money in the Carabao Cup, so we've no, no crowds really. It's nice to progress, but actually financially it doesn't doesn't change the club. Whereas no. the FA Cup isn't the same, is it? Because of well, the prize money. Well, the FA Cup, if we can get a third round draw, even if a Premier League side, whatever, and then from the eye follow and the streams, if they, that's apparent, it still be a good a good amount of money for the club. But no, no, like we'll probably get United away with no fans. <laughs> <laughs> and you look at it, thinking why? Yeah, yeah you why? Know? Well, I was, I was chatting to someone that, um, in the week who's been doing some work with Wickham Wanderers, and he was saying exactly the same that. We can have managed to somehow get themselves promoted to the championship, but they're not really getting the the fruits of their labour because nah. they're not getting the, the big crowds coming to them. Like nah, the Derby County are coming to them, but there's no one in the ground. So, so they're not actually yeah, gaining as much. Yeah, it's been a tough season for them, and hopefully they're good luck because uh, I really rate what Gareth Ainsworth's done uh, yeah. on, a side, on, a, on a side note. I think he's a fantastic manager, a fantastic camaraderie, and hopefully he's given the chance of a few years at least because he's, he used to have all the credibility in the world in that football club. Yeah, absolutely. Um, look at, looking ahead to, I hadn't planned to talk about Wickham, you never know what you're going to get on this show. Um, <laughs> looking ahead at tonight, uh, two, two home games, which is nice. I've, I've even, I, I don't know, you probably feel it, even travelling long yeah. distance twice in a week sort of takes it out of you a little bit. Yeah. But we're, we're back at home. Um, our home record's strong, um, so hopefully you're hoping for points this week. Well, one thing I've learned over the past three days, I've passed three games, we're game for anyone. And that's, that's the way I'm looking at it now. And I, and I genuinely believe that. And I'm confident that this team is game for anyone. Anyone that takes us on, anyone, we can beat anyone on our day. But we just got to apply ourselves the same way. So there's no excuses. So, I, I mean, we've got to play now Tranmere, Cambridge. Two, one's a League One team, one's flying high near yeah. the top of the table. Another two tough tests. But we're, I think, genuinely, we're a tough test for anyone. And if they've seen our past three games, I think the lads believe in themselves, the, we believe in it. And they'll be coming here expecting a game, yeah. But we need the fans to just thank the fans again for everything they do, the way they've supported the club through thick and thin. So we need them. It's a tough period, as you know, financially. But, you know, thank you to you guys as well. You're doing a great job. Talk of the town's been great to get the fan interaction. Yeah. <laughs> Hard work a joke. But, yeah, no, um, no, just genuinely, I think we're game for anyone. Fantastic. Uh, Odin, thank you very much for your time. Uh, thank and, uh, you. Hopefully we'll see you Saturday, no doubt. Um, <laughs> thank you. Earlier on in the week, I caught up with uh, a Crawley Town legend, Ian Payne, uh, who, who came down to the stadium. We had a coffee and a chat about his time 
at Crawley Town. I'd like to say I'm joined now by Crawley Town legend, uh, Ian, Ian Payne. Um, Payne, thanks for, thanks for coming down and uh, for a chat. It's obviously a series we're going to try and do, bringing some old players back. Um, I think we've just done most of it off camera, but we'll, we'll, we'll do it again. Um, firstly, obviously, a lot, of the, a lot of the newer fans, if you like, people sort of, I say post-Man United fans, or younger fans, probably won't know much about you at all, whereas actually a lot of our older viewers, um, I think older viewers will probably know a lot about you and we'll be like, yeah, Ian Payne, club legends. A bit like me in the office earlier on telling Sam all, all about that era. Um, but first, uh, firstly, tell us about how you joined the club, how you come about joining the club and when you joined the club. Yeah, you're making me feel a little bit old now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah sorry. <laughs> you killed me. Um, I joined uh, back in 96, September, October um, 96. I'd just come back from playing in North America um, after doing a year as a pro down in Plymouth. Came back um, from Vancouver and struggled to get um, back into the pro game. So being a local lad, I spoke to um, John Mags at the time and he invited me down. And from there, played the two days later on the, on the next Saturday. So, um, Which is really straight in those days simple, yeah, wouldn't it? Yeah, it was nice and, easy. nice and easy. But obviously, um, you, see, you had you was here probably over a, I don't know, six, seven year spell in total. Uh, I think I've done it eight in eight, eight years in total. Yeah, uh, it was probably we um, were saying a bit earlier on off camera about uh, Billy Smith was was a, the, when the manager I remember as a kid pretty much standing here watching um, was Billy Smith. But it was really after after he left. Francis Vines took over the side, and, and we ended up sort of we had a little spell where we picked up about seven trophies in two years. It was a year big part. Yeah, it catapulted from there. Um, you know, the side Billy Smith had put together was a, was a really really good side. Um, and I, I'm not sure where he ended up playing in, but he he for whatever reason left, um, and Francis came in, inherited a, a really good side um, that kind of looked after itself a little bit, had, had some experienced players, and some good players that have been about in non-league for a fair time. And yeah, the, the two seasons. Um, after Billy Smith went, we were unbelievable. We had yeah. some great games, some great days, great nights out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Most, almost as yeah, important. Yeah, yeah. No, it, was, it was back in the day when you could do those kind of things. And, and I think, um, obviously, the, the thing you're probably most remembered for by, by the Crawley fans is that season when uh, Steve Claridge was running the Weymouth side and, and we were fighting with them for some motion. It's hard to find a lot online, but I've, I found this from Crawley Town History. I'm Ian Mulcahy, I'm sure, has that website. So thanks to Ian for this. Um, but it says, the two teams, Crawley and Weymouth, met at West Sussex, at the Wessex Stadium three days into the new year and things looked like they were going wrong when Andy Little was sent off. With no goalkeeper on the bench, left-back Ian Payne went in the sticks with his first job to be facing a penalty from Steve Claridge. Ian saved the penalty and Crawley went on to win the game 1-0. And, and we were saying, uh, saying earlier on, it was pretty much after that game, we, we pushed on really and, and left Weymouth for dead. And, Really, that, that was almost the turning point in, in the title. So, I'm sure yeah, you're yeah. taking full credit. Well, for sure, yeah, without <laughs> doubt. It was, and it was an unbelievable few days for me because it was my eldest daughter, first daughter, was born on uh, January the 1st. Right. So, two days before okay. that. So, she, she was born on January the 1st. I left Julie in hospital with her to come down here to play the New Year's Day game. Yeah, and yeah. then two days later, uh, you know, obviously went down to Weymouth. Yeah, yeah. And that happened. And was that was that something that was planned that if if Andy Little ever got sent off, you were going in goal? Would it just happen sort of spur of the moment? No, I, I did go in quite quite often. Right, I, think okay. that, I think that month Andy might have got sent off at least once more, <laughs> but um, I put Grant. So it, it happened not regularly, but I probably ended up in goal half a dozen times. I would imagine six, seven, eight times right. maybe. And then wherever I've been since Crawley, I was. The emergency goalkeeper for that as well. <laughs> Had you ever done any goalkeeping before, or was it just? Uh, as a as a kid, I had an older brother, right, and used to play with his friends. And it's always you're the young one, you can go in goal. We're just going to smash balls at you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so I know I, that feeling. Yeah, so I'd done a little bit in that in that respect, and you know, when I was younger, but nothing to any kind of level. I was just fairly confident, short but confident that um, if I had to go in goal, I'd be able to go in goal and, and do all right. And, and what was what was going through your mind? Because obviously, Steve Claridge, I remember at the time. It was a big deal him being at Weymouth. I think they were doing a, a, a TV documentary, so you sort of found yourself in goal as, as a left back in goal. We were one nil up at the time, was it nil nil? Uh, no, we were one nil up. One yeah. nil up at the yeah, time. I think so it was about sixty minutes in. Right. So, so, so holding on, what, what's going through your head when Steve Carriage is stepping up? Um, the only thing that went through my head, to be fair, was dive to the right. You can only dive to the right. I, never, <laughs> I could never ever dive to my left. So I knew I was always going to dive to my right. Yeah. Um, and luckily enough, he hit it to the right. And 
got a the strong hand on it and yeah, yeah. pushed it away. So yeah, yeah. I, I can I can remember. Um, I wasn't at that game. I was actually playing table tennis for uh, for Sussex at the time. I remember coming up on the on the screen, and then Dave, you you always looked for the scores coming through and was it coming in. Then reading afterwards <laughs> about everything that happened, like crazy. Um, that that season, it seemed to just go right. I don't think we were really fancied at the start of the season necessarily to go on to, to win the league. We probably weren't one of the, the fancied sides. But it just no, I don't think we were. I don't think we were. But we we started strong, and and like I said, we, we had a we had a really strong side, and we got a little bit of momentum going, and we had a lot of confidence in the side. We knew we were, you know, we knew we had a good side. We knew we were strong. We had a really good team spirit. Some of the players in there, and the spirit that we had was was unbelievable. Um, and we knew that you know, on, on occasions that would carry us through. Um, but yeah, after we beat Weymouth, they seemed to tail away. Yeah. And we um, we just kicked on and got stronger and stronger and, and won it fairly comfortably. Would you say would you say that year obviously we, we went? Oh, I remember winning it away at, at Welling. We well, beat Welling three 0 and uh, yeah. and won it on the lot. Uh, won it there and it's all the foul. I remember as a kid, there's a big drop onto the pitch from, and I remember like, a few people going over and it's, it's, it felt like really really low down. Um, was, was that the highlight of your career? Would you say that, that sort of that period of time? Um, probably for for while I was at Crawley, it yeah. was probably the the best um, the best season that I'd had while I was here. The first year we came here was a good season. Although yeah. you know, although we weren't a strong side, it was nice to be part of the transition from Town Mead to you know really good stadium. Uh, at the time, still, yeah, a, you know, still a nice stadium. It's, it's quite similar, isn't it? Other than, yeah, other than the, 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 yeah, the changed a little there. bit. Everything else is exactly the same. Yeah. Um, it was, you know, it was nice to be part of the transition from Town Mead to to here. Um, so that was probably, and, and the things that happened during that season, you know, it's a it's a shame that I'm only ever remembered for a, for a, being <laughs> for a goalkeeper yeah. when I sort of played. <laughs> I think I played over 300 games yeah. out on pitch, but you know, it's, yeah, a, yeah. it's a shame to be remembered well, for a well, save I, of a penalty. I, but. I, I never realised how long you were here. I knew I knew you were here sort of late 90s. I didn't realise how I knew, I knew you'd played sort of a couple of hundred. But I didn't realise how many games you played and how long you were here. Yeah, yeah, just just over. I think it was about eight years in the end. Yeah, so yeah. just just short of a testimonial, but <laughs> I think I I'll have a word with them. So if yeah. I get one. And so well, afterwards. Um, you, you left Crawley. I think you, I know at one point you ended up playing at Horsham, didn't you? What, what yeah. What happened after? I, I went to Horsham um, with John, John Max over there, who was obviously here when I joined yeah, Crawley. Yeah, yeah. So I've known John for a long, long time, um, and I played over there for a couple of years. And then I had a really bad break of my leg. Um, right. I broke my leg in four places playing up at Bourne Wood for them. And I think at the time I was thirty, um, start struggling a little bit to keep the weight off. I was never the fittest player in the world anyway, I never really done a pre-season. I used to try and avoid them until the game started. I was never really fit, but um, I kind of hit 30, broke my leg and, and then um, things started to... I didn't, want to, I didn't want to end up playing sort of at a, almost at a level that I, I was unable to cope with. I didn't want to become sort of a, a bad player yeah, um, yeah. when I'd had, you know, I'd had a really enjoyable career and I um, was sort of known, not as a great player by any means, but you know, I, I was a yeah, solid consistent. player. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was a solid player at the at the level. That I was scored a few pens as well. I seem to remember. Did score a few pens. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I used to like taking penalties. <laughs> yeah, that was probably my only chance to score. Really, <laughs> I never got fined. Like a a non-league Dennis Irwin. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And no, I liked. I did like taking penalties. I think I missed one or two, but um, for the most part, I was fairly reliable. Yeah, yeah. And, and and tell us sort of just finally what what you're doing now, sort of in terms of work and on able to businesses. Yeah, I've got a couple of businesses that um, are struggling at the minute, to be fair. One of them is hospitality and uh, VIP tickets for things like concerts, um, Royal Ascot, Wimbledon, uh, rugby and things like that. So obviously that one's dead in the water at the minute and has been for six or seven months. Mm. Um, and the other one is uh, football, Premier League um, hospitality. So yeah. I'm an official reseller for various different um, agents and things like that. And again, that one's completely dead in the water as well so it's been a, it's been a tough time tough seven months but um, <laughs> during lockdown I've actually retrained and done 11 exams and really? can now do uh, bookkeeping and accountancy okay so you haven't wasted the time yeah, I've not yeah. wasted it but um, yeah so hopefully that that might pick up a little bit and earn me a little bit of money while I'm uh, trying to get through to, to crowds being back in the in the grounds which is massively important because there's nothing worse than watching a game on Sky TV or you know, and, and having no atmosphere, no crowd, sounds piped yeah. in, and things like that. It's just it's, it's not, not the, the same. same here. Like it's no. just really football. People say football is nothing about fans. It's proved it the yeah. last few weeks. Yeah, so yeah, it really is. Yeah, and it's it's um, you know from from what I can remember, it's so hard to get yourself motivated and 
and realise that you're playing in, you know, in proper games when there's no crowds here. It makes such a difference to you, you know, even though half the time you're blocking them out, you're aware of the sound and, and all that kind of thing. And it, I feel sorry for the players. It must be so difficult to, to get themselves lifted for the, for the games week yeah, in, week yeah. out when there's, there's nobody coming through the doors. Yeah, but there you go. Um, Payne, thank you much for coming down. Really appreciate you yeah, no giving worries. up your time, and uh, and I'm sure like fans old and new will find it interesting to sort of hear about what it was like that time. Um, we'll, we'll hopefully have a few more ex players coming either coming down or sort of electronically uh, getting in touch with them. So uh, we'll have plenty more coming up on the show. But for the time being, back to you in the studio. I'm off. <laughs> thank you. Um, yeah, a few comments. A few comments about about my beard. Well, I'm sorry, it's like, luckily, two away games last week, I was looking a bit messy, but two home games this week, I've had a bit of time to go to the barber and sort myself out. Someone who always looks pristine, it's Gary Smith from BBC <laughs> Sussex Radio. Gary, thank you very much for joining us. You're welcome. F- first thing to address, more importantly than the football in tonight's game, mm. you're, you're going to have to relinquish your higher or lower crown tonight, because we're, we're running out of time. I am, sadly, Joe. <laughs> yeah, with the early kick-off and the fact that I had to rush here from an early start at work today... Uh, yeah, very sadly. But I, I think there's an able replacement uh, well, coming well, in to try and maintain, the, uh, maintain the crown for me. But I, if I bow out, I bow, bow out as an undefeated champion, Absolutely. almost like a boxer. <laughs> more, more importantly than that, let, let's, get to, let's get to business. Yeah. Um, two long away trips last week. We spoke about it a little bit on the show, so I don't want, don't want to dwell on it too much. But mm. um, we're back home tonight. Do you think the home form is going to be important to us this year? And, and actually being back at home, we've got one point on the road, which wasn't a disaster. Yeah. But actually, we've got two home games this week. We need to pick up points. Yeah, I think it's going to be very important, Joe, to be honest. It's been a great record, hasn't it, since John took over, undefeated since last November, I think, when Exeter came here and were the last club to come and win a league game here. Uh, and I think that's something that the you know the management team and the players will be looking to keep going, not just because it's a run that will keep to keep going, but I think home form, as you say, is, is going to be vital. I think two games this week, Cambridge flying, obviously, at the top of the table, coming here on, on Saturday, and Tranmere tonight is always a tough one. Another side like Southend, relegated out of League One last season, they'll be looking to make their mark. And again, it's so tight in the division at the moment that three points for Tranmere tonight will knock them above Crawley, and Crawley will start to sort of slip into the bottom half of the table. So home form, zippy pitch, you know, sadly no fans here to see it, a little bit of rain over the pitch, and I think it will suit the way that that Crawley like to get the ball down and play, as we saw on Saturday. Yeah, and move it, move it quickly. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. And and we had um, we had Rob on the show from Tramway earlier, and he's saying that their side are really sort of mixed up and down. Mm. I suppose it makes it quite hard to know what to expect from them when they haven't really got a settled team. They're always a tough side, though. They'll be looking to bounce back as soon as they can into League One. I think that's where they feel they deserve to be. Um, you know, not down in, in League Two. And, and when you look down at the side, they got some great experience. James Vaughan was a, a youth player at Everton, went on to make nearly 50 appearances and scored seven goals for them. Uh, Peter Clark at the back, 680 career uh, appearances. That's almost as many, I think, as, as a certain Mr. Bullman. Um, but they've got that, you know, like Crawley have got, and we've mentioned before, a great mix of experience and youth. And I think they'll be looking to start to get a little bit of a waveform for themselves together because they haven't done very, very well on the road so far this season. They might see this as a potential possibility of picking up three points and they'll look to kick on from there the same as Crawley would be looking to maintain that home record yeah and, and I can see here Alex Wright is predicting a 3-2 win for Crawley what well, are you predicting uh, I'm being more positive tonight Joe than I've been in the last couple of away games uh, I'm predicting a classic goal in each half 2-0 victory for Crawley tonight okay positive positive like yeah. it <laughs> right before you go Gary uh, I'm gonna get my glamorous assistant Geordie Nick uh, it's your hundred. Yeah, yeah, the, the, the famous voiceover. It's a kick, fuck <laughs> yeah, Hundred games, Mrs. Wow. Blackmore, got wife of Kiosk Ken. Wow, hundred games with Gary. Round of applause. <laughs> thank you Commentated so on a hundred games. Yeah. So, uh, thank you. she said she said she wasn't. She did. It was a bit last minute. So she said, "Don't show it off to the camera." Too wow. much. It was great, so Mrs. Blackmore. If you're watching, great cake. Great thank cake. You very much. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, leave it here, Gary. You can't actually eat it. That's for us. But, okay. Yeah, but yeah. <laughs> Just for but, display so, purposes. Yeah, thank you for your services. I'm sure the iFollow viewers, uh, particularly at this time, more than ever, really enjoying uh, listening You're welcome. in. So no thank you very time. much You're to welcome. you. Talking of Kiosk Ken, it's time for Kiosk Ken's Deal of the Week. Hello, I'm Kiosk Ken. Welcome to this week's Deal of the Week from the club shop. Every week there's going to be a deal, but it's only on for seven days. This week's charmer is this lovely set of cufflinks here, only four pounds, but we only have 10 sets left. So if you want them, get in quick, contact the club shop or come in and buy a lovely set of cufflinks, four pound each. Get in there.
Yeah, so, as I said, we've got two new challenges here for Hyrule R. Um, just, just before we start that, John Barnett, reward for only 100 commentaries. All right, John, we know you did lots of commentaries, you were great, but you've had your time, and now it's Gary's time, all right? So get back in your box. I love you really, Barn. Anyway, without further ado, it's Hyrule Lower. eBay got it higher or lower with talk of the town. We're back on, we're back in the room, honestly. God, what's going on here? Chop, chop. <laughs> Gotta be better. He's left the cake. He... <laughs> anyway, yes, higher or lower. Tom is standing, we, we was hoping to have the champion, Gary, but he's got to be back on air. Um, but there you go, Tom. You, you've stepped in at last minute. You haven't had time to prepare. No, nothing, but I'm happy to be here. Yeah, yeah, yeah happy to be here. You can't do any worse than <laughs> Sam last week. That's a positive. On my right, we've got Harry from Talk Sports, Harry Maynard, or another exile. Oh, I didn't get a cupcake for 50 games. Did you? Well, That's poor, isn't it? Well, yeah, I mean, only 50. <laughs> and, and, and Gary's actually good, so... Uh, <laughs> I'm joking, I'm joking. Harry, uh, thank you for We're going to catch up very shortly. Um, obviously, Tom needs to get back to his duties. So let's play higher or lower. Grab your pen, grab your boards. I'm assuming you watch the show regularly, Harry. Uh, yeah, every week. Of course, of course. OK, question one. A few more football general, general football questions this week. So, question one, in the Premier League, did Michael Owen score a higher or lower number of goals than Robbie Fowler? A bit before your time, probably, Tom, but there you go, it is what it is. So, did Michael Owen score a higher or lower number of goals than Robbie Fowler? We'll go Tom first. You have gone... Lower. We need a bit more enthusiasm. You have gone... Lower. Lower. Ooh. Lovely. <laughs> and Harry has gone... Higher. Higher. Yeah. <laughs> Break out of the top. <laughs> I can reveal Owen scored 150, Fowler 163. Oh, Russell's wow. Lower. Already, but already oh. better than Sam last oh. week. It is 1 0 to Tom. Oh, so I can't be worse than Sam? You, you can't do any worse than oh, Sam. He lost 5 0. He was absolutely shambolic. Okay, question two. David Seaman here. Did David Seaman win a higher or lower number of caps than Gordon Banks? Random questions here on higher or lower once again. Did David Seaman win a higher or lower number of England caps than Gordon Banks? Harry's gone. Higher again. Higher again. Tom has gone. Higher as well. Higher as well. It is higher. David Seaman 75, Gordon Banks 73. Play along at home. So, <laughs> one for the older generation there, one of the older viewers. Barney will know that. Barney will definitely know that. <laughs> okay, question three. Uh, last season for Crawley Town, so we're back, we're back at home here. Last season for Crawley Town, did George Frankham play a higher or lower number of games than Ashley Naderson? So last season, did George Frankham play a higher or lower number of games than Ashley Naderson? George Frankham obviously flying this year, three goals already from fullback. Okay, Harry's gone. Lower. Lower. Tom has gone. Controversial, higher. Higher. Well, that controversial, is it? It's just a game. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you go lower, Harry? Um, I just thought it was tight and I've been higher the first two goes, haven't I? <laughs> it's actually not that tight. Frank is it not? played 20. Madison. And that's was injured, wasn't he, though? They were, yeah, I think Frank was last yeah. season was inside and had a few injuries. It's so all up there. One, no, 2-2 two, two here. 2-2. <laughs> two, two. It's tight. It's very tight. Uh, okay, question four. Okay, I'm going to ask Tom to write this one. You've got to write your answer to this. Okay. Tranmere were relegated from League One on points per game last season, but how many points per game were they behind Wimbledon and therefore safety? Mm. So Tranmere were relegated from League One yeah. on points per game last season, but how many points per game were they behind Wimbledon? Everyone should know this, really. Great question. Everyone should, Everyone know, should know this. It's a great question. Come on. Two. Two points per game. Mm. You understood the question there, Tom? Do you think? I don't think so, no. <laughs> no I'm, I'm, Harry, I'm are you go. going higher or lower? <laughs> oh, do you want me to write it? Yep, kind of the game. Higher. I don't think you understood the question <laughs> even more. It's more 0. 0. 0. 6. Ah. Oh, well, <laughs> so it's not 0.06. Well, that would have been an easy tap yeah. in lower, wouldn't yeah, it? You, you've won. Your answer was rubbish. Don't look so pleased with yourself. That was embarrassing. <laughs> Talk sport. <laughs> Unbelievable. Okay, so it's it is three two to Tom. Brilliant. Now, Harry. Yep. Your question. John Aldridge is arguably Tranmere's most famous player. 
Yep. But how many games did he play for Tranmere? <laughs> right. You need this one. I do. I've got an absolute belter of a tiebreaker if not. <laughs> you have gone. 646. 646. Okay. Tom, higher or lower? Tom has gone. Well, I've gone for lower. Lower. That's some what going. Do you, that, what do you that? think it is? I think maybe something like 300. The answer is, if Tom is right, he wins the game. If Harry's right, we go to a tiebreak. It's 243 oh, lower. Well done. Tom wins 4-2. Very good. 4, Sam 0. Tom, very I'll take good. it, I'll take it. Yeah, fair. Yeah. Very good. Good performance there from Tom. Uh, round of applause for Tom. Come on. Gallery. Oh, yeah. Oh, thank, thank you very you. much. Jordan Nick, my assistant, on his phone, not concentrating on the show. Unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> Tom, you can go and crack on back to your press much. area. You. We will see you again on Saturday. Really? You will yep. have to try and defend defend your crown. Um, thank you very much for playing. Go on, you can make your way thank off. Thank you very much. Um, I'm going to take a seat and have a chat with, with, with Harry Maynard. Talk sports, Harry Maynard. Um, Harry, firstly, uh, firstly, let's look at football in general. Yep. There's been a lot of... Um, a lot of talk in the press about like Project Big Picture yeah. and, and and what what the big clubs really need to do for the little clubs. So from your from your time you're hearing opinions, I imagine on talk sport. What, yeah. what are your views and what, what needs to happen? I think there's been a lot of support for for lower league football in general. I think it's taken time for it to come to to where we're at now. I know that the most recent update that there is is that the EFL have rejected money from the Premier League, but. Personally, I just purely think they're holding out for, for a little bit more. Um, we've spoken to, to chairman, owners, directors of football from Championship League One, League Two clubs, and I think you get a, an understanding that Crawley are, are in quite a good situation, really, financially, because there's clubs, um, we've had like the Scunthorpe chairman on, um, he said, if we don't get any real help, end of November, we're, you know, we're really, really struggling. I think, obviously, you've had Berry go and... And size like that, you've got the situation at Macclesfield, we're going to have problems. I think there's going to be more of that. The longer we go on through this and the slower they are to react and get the EFL money, um, we're going to have a few more cases like that. But from obviously a fan's perspective, John's been great, Erden's been great, chipping in on and doing bits that, that we do and I ask them to do on TalkSport. And you do get a really good picture that Crawley are in such a good situation, luckily touch words, and it's nice to be a supporter of a smaller club and you don't necessarily have to worry in a way that, that clubs like Berry and stuff I like that have gone through. Because we have that support we, from, from the owner. And I mean, we're, we're very fortunate. we've had it in the past before, you know, problem owners or, the, or financial struggles. Um, so definitely the older fans. I mean, I've heard Barney go through it numerous <laughs> times about how nervy it's, it, can, it can be. But no, no we're, we're so lucky to be in a position where, yes, we've, we've sold players through the years, um, yes, we, we maybe have plateaued a little bit in, in league position, but it, you would take that over dropping out of the league or being under loads of financial stress. I think it's been handled really well here. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, have you been able to watch many of the games? I've watched a few on yeah. iFollow. This is my, this is my debut back um, in action, so it's, it's great to, to be back. And I know it's maybe a, a little bit cringy. I sometimes cringe at work when you hear people go, oh, so lucky to be, be able to still go to the stadiums and stuff. You know, just do your job. But I think when you... Yeah step back and think it's, it's nice I know you're obviously a, a Crawley fan there's a few others yeah, that are lucky yeah. enough to work for the club and, and support the club and you do have to kind of go it is so nice to be able to still come back here and, and watch it and you yourself obviously do a, do a good job trying to, to bring the fans a, a little bit closer thank you Harry thank you. yeah yeah, yeah, father, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so finally we are we are getting getting quite yep. 10 minutes from kick off now what are you expecting uh, this evening a win, a win and Crawley. only a win yeah I think I, I think the home form goes a little bit under the radar. Um, it's, when you break it down, normally you hear League One, League Two clubs are like, oh, they, you know, they haven't lost at home in, in three or four months. Like, our home form is unbelievable, for, yeah, especially yeah. for where we are in the league. Maybe, yes, it masks over that the away form isn't, isn't too good, um, but I think it's, it's a great asset to have you know, such a, such a, a good place to, to play. And, and obviously, there's confidence when they, when they turn up here. I know 
maybe we've been a little bit naive in away games and not seeing out results. But I don't think they've had any any essence of that in, in home games. They normally go out and, and deliver a few points. Yeah, well, things are... Look, lastly, just t tell us, what, what are you doing at Talk Sport at the moment? Like, how, how's it going? So I'll, the, the main thing I'll, I'll give myself a, a little plug is I produce an EFL show on a, on a Friday night, which I, I do try and fly the flag for Crawley yeah. amongst, <laughs> amongst the media. And I, like I said, John's been on it um, numerous times throughout the last few months. Um, that's six o'clock on a, on a Friday evening, talks forward to. That's the, probably the only place really on radio that you can get a couple hours of just wholehearted football league content, even not just championship heavy. We, we drop down to, to League One and League Two as well. So uh, that's probably the main thing I'm, I'm most proud of doing and yeah, obviously yeah. get to yeah, fly, the, fly the Crawley flag. Oh, fantastic. Well, if you, if you ever need a presenter for the show, <laughs> I know a guy who, uh, with, with, with eight, eight episodes experience, don't oh, panic, I'm, I'm loyal. It all started on your, it started <laughs> on your co-commentary days away at yeah. Barnet. <laughs> oh, yes. God. Standing in. Uh, Harry, thank you very much. Cheers, Joe, uh, thank you. Us. And thank you to you guys at home for joining us as well. Really grateful for, uh, for your support and tuning in. We'll be back here in the Far Signs pod on Saturday when the, uh, we will be taking in the visit of... Uh, Tranmere, not Tranmere, there's an art, Cambridge. Uh, so, so please do uh, join us once again on Facebook, Twitter or YouTube. However however you get in the show, please do join us on Saturday. We'll be on live from 2pm. Thank you, Harry. Thank you, all our guests this evening. Uh, hopefully, you'll be flicking over to iFollow now to take into the game. The only thing, come on, join me, Harry. The only thing that's left to say is, come on, you Reds! Come on, you Reds! Yeah. Come on, you Reds! <laughs> <laughs>